Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're going to be learning how to write a text-based adventure game in Python. Now these games are so fun because you can easily build up your own story and your own game. And uh, yeah, it's just super simple to do. And it's so fun if you love games and you love just learning about how to code games. Now we're going to reuse the same story from my video from yesterday that was written in C Sharp about the same thing. However, um, you go ahead and use whatever story you like, make up your own, use a commonly known story, but I would recommend heavily to make sure you have this story kind of set up in your head or you know maybe written down somewhere ahead of time. That way it just makes it um, way easier to code. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and create a new Python project. Um, I use Replit here, uh, but you can use whatever Python environment you'd like. We're gonna call this Adventure Game. Go ahead and click create. All right, guys, we've loaded into our Python environment. So the first thing to do is add a comment and print a welcome message. It's super easy to print stuff in Python. You literally just say print and then put whatever you'd like in these quotes. And I already have this storyline, so we're gonna say welcome to the haunted mansion with an exclamation mark. And I'm just gonna add some backstory here. So, you know, we're at this haunted mansion. Um, how did we get here? What is it for? And we're gonna say, you are a distant family member of a rich millionaire who has just passed away, leaving this mansion to you. So we know that we've kind of inherited this house and, uh, you know, it's probably creepy looking. And, uh, but the user doesn't know that, right? So let's go ahead and tell them what it looks like and what's going on next. So obviously if you inherited a house or mansion, you'd want to go probably look at it, see what's in there, right? So we're gonna say, as the newfound owner, you decide to pay a visit to the mansion. And for our next line, we're going to say, the house is dated, creaky, and falling apart. And then we're going to go ahead and tell them that you walk in the front door. So now comes time for our first question of the game. We're going to say, do you want to enter the living room or the dining room? With a question mark. And now comes the time where we've asked a question, but how do we actually gather some sort of input from the user? And what we're gonna do is prompt user for input, or actually for a choice. And it's super simple to do this in Python. We're just going to say room choice is equal to input, and then put a little caret symbol in a space. And what this is gonna do is kind of put this caret symbol in a space on some new line, and then the user can type in whatever they want after that. And it's kind of like a console um, application. And what, what I mean by that is if you've ever used command prompt, it works the same way. You know, there's this caret and this file path, and it's super nice to just type after it and get instant feedback from the console. So we're gonna set up our program just like that. So now that we have some sort of choice from the user, there's a couple options that could have happened. So they either entered in living room, they entered in dining room, or they entered in something else. We need the, an if, an else if, and then just an else. If is going to be, if the room choice is equal to the living room, we're going to do some stuff in here. If the room choice is equal to the dining room, we're gonna do some more stuff in here. And then the else is kind of the catch-all. We're going to just simply say invalid choice, please enter living room or dining room. So let's start laying out our story and let's assume that they went to the living room and we're gonna begin coding stuff here. So they just entered into the living room. Let's give them some context first. So first we're gonna say you enter the living room, period. But what is in this living room, right? And that's what we're gonna say on this next line. And in this living room, we're gonna say, as you walk in, you see a sleeping pit bull guarding some gold jewelry. Obviously that's really creepy. And if I were to enter into a living room of a house that I thought was abandoned and there's a pit bull in there, I'm going to instantly want to leave. But uh, yeah, now we're going to ask the user what they want to do. So we're going to print our next question and we're going to say, do you want to steal the jewelry from the pit bull? With a question mark. And just like before, we're going to say something similar. So pit bull choice is equal to input 
with another care in space. And just like our first set of questions, we're gonna have an if, an else if, and then an else. So the else is going to be extremely similar to um, what it was earlier. So it's going to be an invalid choice and then kind of just tell them what they needed to say instead of what they really entered. So invalid choice, please enter. And then we're gonna say yes or no instead of dining room and living room. And then yeah, for the if, we're going to assume they said yes. So if the pit bull choice is equal to yes, then we wanna do some stuff. If the pit bull choice is equal to no, then we wanna do some different stuff. But first we're going to work on yes. So they attempt to try to steal the jewelry from this pit bull, right? What we're gonna do is say, you attempt to steal the jewelry, but it wakes up and rips you to shreds. And now we're going to print another line. You are now dead. So the game kind of ends there. Um, and you can keep expanding off this or it, you can go as far as you want. But for this tutorial, it's very simple and this gives you the perfect framework to code your own game. And we're not gonna go really any further than this. So we're just gonna kind of end the game there. But uh, yeah, let's work on uh, if they entered no now. We wanna also end the game here as well. But obviously if they said no, they took the safer route. And uh, yeah, we're just going to simply print. We're gonna first say you decide to not steal the dog's jewelry. And because they did that, we're gonna print another line. You turn around and leave the house safely. All right guys, that is it for our living room path here. Now let's move on to the um, dining room path. So they entered into the dining room. Let's give them a little bit of context, kind of like we did earlier. We're gonna have another print here. First thing we're gonna say is you chose to go into the dining room, the period. We're gonna have another print line. And we're gonna say, as you walk in, you see a shiny vase on the table. We're gonna print another one. And here's our question. Do you want to open the vase with a question mark? And just like before, we're gonna say um, vase choice is equal to input with a caret symbol and a space. And just like earlier, we're gonna have an if, an else if, and then an else. And the else is going to be almost an exact, actually it will be an exact copy of the one we have for a living room. Invalid choice, please enter yes or no. And that's because this question is going to be a yes or no as well. So we could just reuse that same line. And just like before, we're going to say, you know, if the vase choice is equal to yes, we wanna do this amount of stuff. And if the vase choice is equal to no, we wanna do this other kind of stuff. So if they enter yes, we're just going to kind of end the game simply and leave it up in the air. We're going to say, you open the vase and find a pile of bones with an exclamation mark. And yeah, you can kind of just let the person playing the game uh, kind of wonder why they found it. The game ends there, but you can keep going if you want or just end it like I am right here. If they decided to enter no, what we're gonna say is print. First, we're gonna tell them you decide not to open the shiny vase, and then another print. And then we're gonna say, as you turn to leave, you hear a cracking sound coming from the corner. Obviously, if you're anywhere, um, and worst case scenario, probably a haunted abandoned mansion. Um, if you hear a cracking sound from coming from the corner, that's probably the universal sign of, um, I'm about to just have diarrhea in my pants. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's expand on this cracking in the corner. What comes out of this corner is a dark figure with glowing red eyes. So a dark figure with glowing red eyes launches at you knocking you unconscious. Obviously that's terrifying and the user is now going to be kind of interested in what happens next. And here's the twist and here's how we're gonna end the game. Instead of saying, oh, you died or you know, you wake up in a week. What we're gonna say is you wake up in your bed. It was all a dream. And I feel like that's a great way to end it because you're very involved in the game and then all of a sudden you just wake up and realize that it wasn't real at all. All right guys, so that lays out all of our paths for this program. So let's go ahead and run it. I'm gonna move this over here, click run, and let's just test out a little bit to make sure everything works. So we click run and we notice it prints us our initial kind of welcome statement and our first ever question. 
and then we have this little carrot and this little console thing. So do you want to enter the living room or the dining room? Um, you know, I'd like to enter the uh, dining room, for example. And then now it answers or asks us the next question. You chose to go into the dining room. You see that shiny vase. Do you want to open the vase? Uh, yeah, of course I do. I want to see what's in there. So I click yes. Oh, and you'll notice invalid choice. Please enter yes or no. That's good because our catch statement is working. Let's relaunch it. We're going to say dining room. Do you want to open the vase? Um, yeah, we do. So yes, you open the vase and find a pile of bones. So it's great. It works as expected and we are having fun playing it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and comment down below any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.